the tragedy of not finishing. That's just a title. The tragedy of not what? Finishing. We are in the last month of the year. It is not over. The year has not finished. So it will be a great tragedy. You're already in the last lap of the year and you are not finishing with the year. The tragedy of not what? Finishing. Revelation 3 verse 1 to 3. Let's read. If we can stand, let's stand read the word of God. Every one of us, let's rise up and honor God's word. To the angel of the church in Sardis write, These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up. Strengthen what remains. Strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have found your deeds unfinished. You will finish. For I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my God. Verse 3. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard, hold it fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not wash, I will come upon you as a thief and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. Father, we thank you this afternoon. Lord, bless your word. Lord, breathe upon this word. Lord, even as we fellowship, share your word, let this your word bring healing our way, bring deliverance our way, bring salvation our way. Let this your word transform us. Let this your word save souls. Let this your word empower us to finish well and finish strong. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Somebody shout hallelujah. Be seated. God bless you. It's good to have you around. You can as well be any other place but it's used to be in Chapel of Grace. The scripture, yes, in, we're focusing briefly saying we are centering on the verse 2 of Revelation 3. He said, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die for I have not found your works perfect before God. Now, in this week, we had the census figures of the United Kingdom 2021 came up and it was said by the records, if I can read, if I can get the statistics right, about 46% of the residents of the UK still declare that they are Christians. And this is the lowest so far in the history of the United Kingdom. I mean, less than half of the population are Christians in the UK. In Bradford, about 30, 34, 33, 34 percent. Bradford indigenous by the census figures of last year are Christians. 28.5 there about uh, they have no faith. They declare that they have no faith. 31 are of the other major religion, 9% for another minor religion. And that is the figure that we have. That means the argument coming up is that England, the UK, cannot, should not be decreed or declared a Christian nation any longer since we are less than half of the population. And that is the, the, the what is being pushed by the others groups that it is an error for we to say that the United Kingdom is a Christian nation. And that is where God has called you and I. That's where God has led us into. The, we are in the nation that we know for many, many years is a Christian nation. But by the recent figures that came up this week, that the UK, the Christians, are less than half of the population. The writer, the letter to the Church of Sardis, he said, you are a dead church. To the angel of the church in Sardis writes, these are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive. 
but truly you are dead. Are we part of that dead church? Are we part of the dead church? Are we part of the people that will be ascribed or being considered as being dead? If we are not, then we must wake up. The verse 2 says, therefore, wake up. If we are not dead, then we must what? Wake up. And he said, not just wake up, strengthen the things which remain. If for the six percent are left, then we must be strengthened. We must encourage one another. If 33 percent of us are still believers in Bradford district, then we must wake up and strengthen one another. Not just you waking up alone, but you must be ready to strengthen another person. Wake up, strengthen what remains and is about to die. So many others want to die. That's why we must wake up and strengthen. Iron sharp network. Iron. It's not the race, it's not just about you alone. They said the single tree cannot what? Be in the forests. So in this scriptures, Revelation 3. This was an epistle to the church in Sardis, the dead church. First, three things. First, he said, wake up. Be watchful. Come out of your sleep. Be prayerful. Luke 18, 1 says, men always ought to pray. Wake up. We are to wake up. Revelation 3, the verse 2, the NLT says, Wake up, strengthen what little remains. Strengthen what remains. The remnants. For even what is left is almost dead. Even the 46% nationally and 33% locally here in Bradford, they are almost dying. For even what is left is almost dead. I find that your actions do not meet the requirements of God. It's a challenge. This past week, were you able to read one chapter of the Bible? Or did you even read one verse of the Bible? Just one verse. You took your Bible and just took a verse to just sit for five minutes and meditate. Or today you will pray for five minutes the whole week. You took time to say, I'm praying. It's a prayer time. You talk to God. Five, just five minutes. If not, you are dead. You are dead. You are among the dead. Wake up. Tell somebody, wake up. It's not about all the jamboree, all that we see, come and jump and all that. There's an agenda. That when you say you are a child of God, a Christian, they say you are a liar. You are a liar. They'll shut your mouth up. You must what? Wake up. Come back to God. Come back to God. Discover God and keep his promises. I love the testimony of a sister who says, God is good. Sister Kane, am I right? God is good. God is good. Amen. God is good. That summarizes everything. That's why we have every month a chance given service. Because what? God is good. You can't fault it. You don't know, but to me, God is good. To Sister Kane, they what? God is good. You can choose to be gloomy, but for myself and Sister Kane, they, God is good. You can join. We'll allow you. Amen. God, it's time to dance. You dance. Rejoice. Wake up. Because what? God is good. Hallelujah. Sister Gracious, she had a testimony about she came and she had a purpose. She wanted to work in the university. She became a student 
international student office board manager, whatever. I remember the day she came and gave me some money. I came, I just came to church in the morning and she was first in church that morning. The door, then she came to me, came with an envelope. I said, this young girl, I think she just started coming, I think first or second Sunday in church, I believe. And she gave me some money. And I will say it again, Pastor Akpo is a very good grant to sue. Amen. I'm not saying so that you can come and sue the next day. The last time I said it, I went somewhere to preach in Oxbridge. We were in holidays, London area. And I finished preaching and we came back. The pastor called, oh, somebody from my church wanted to give you or brought an item for you. And I said, please, you can have it, you know. You can have it. It's a pastor friend, you can have. He said, no, it's well packaged. I said, open it. And because when I consider postage, I said, what is there that you want to now post something from all the way and pay all the... He said, it looks like something special. And he insisted and he posted it. And this was a 340 euro wristwatch. I said, oh, I bless the brother. He said, but pastor, it's not even that. The week he brought the thing, that week he got two jobs. One was a 150,000 pound job. That same week that he he brought the present to the pastor. And another job. And I came and I said, it's a, that means Pastor Akpo is a good grant to sue. By Monday, somebody was passing by. I didn't even know. He, he came to the, our door. He, he put an envelope. Amen. He dropped an envelope and passed by. I said, oh, oh, it is well. I went to the door. I saw envelope. And I saw the money. I said, well, another miracle for this one too. By the time I came back, somebody brought another wristwatch again. I said, it is well. So gracious, this is just the beginning. You will go higher in the mighty name of Jesus. As I think I shared it there before. Somebody called, one of our former students called. He's, 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 in, he's in the forces, one of the forces. And he, he called and said, Pastor, pray for me. I'm in a mess. Big mess that's whereby it's all over for his career. And we prayed. After I prayed, he, he, he said, ask, ask for account numbers and whatever. I sent an account and he put in a millionaire. I said, I've, I've never seen a millionaire gift before. This is serious. What I prayed for, the answer has not come. It's in the court case. And I said, I can't touch this money because if he loses, I'm in trouble. <laughs> You know when you have some blessings and you are scared to enjoy the blessing. If this guy loses his case, then Pastor Paul prayer didn't work. So I didn't touch the money. And here I am. You see money you can't touch. It is well. I said, Lord, you better do something. I called the brother boldly. He said, hold your peace. Do not fret. Every whatever be the accusation, null and void. And after about almost a year, he called and pastor, pastor, all is well. The case, nothing. I said, now I can enjoy my money. You will enjoy your blessing in the name of Jesus. Paul, now the writer, the writer in writing to the church says, Wake up, be watchful, come out of your sleep, be prayerful. Ephesians 5 verse 4 encourages us, Paul writing here. It says, wake, awake, you who sleep. Ephesians 5 14. Awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead. Arise from the dead. And Christ will give you Lights. Now, let me read that in the message translation. I'll read from the verse 14 to 20. Wake up from your sleep. Ephesians 5, 14 to 20. Wake up from your sleep. Climb out of your coffins. Many of us are in spiritual coffins. Who was the one that said she saw coffin? Sister Ebube. Ebube. 
wake up from your sleep, climb out of your coffins, you will climb out of your coffins. In the name of Jesus. Christ will show you the light. So watch your, st your step. Use your head. Use your head. Make the most of every chance you get. These are desperate times. As a nation, we are in desperate times. Don't live carelessly. Unthinkingly. Some of us, we, we take decisions without thinking. We just take careless decisions. Don't live what? Carelessly. You are in a vibrant spiritual atmosphere for just no reason. You make a choice, you, are, you go to a dead zone. And you don't know that it's your spiritual life that controls the physical. As long as a nation is spiritually alive, believe you me, God will show up. That's why don't write some nations off. Some nations that you are seeing, don't write them off. As long as the nation is spiritually alive, God will show up. As long as the UK was spiritually alive, UK was great. But thank God you and I, we are here. The dry bones will rise again. Use your head. Make the most of every chance you get. You get. These are desperate times. Don't live carelessly, unthinkingly. Make sure you understand what the master wants. Don't drink too much wine. Is it there? Don't what? Christmas is coming. Christmas is what? Now tap somebody. Don't drink too much wine. They won't like. They won't like it. They won't like it. They didn't come for that today. Tell another person, please don't drink, sister. Don't drink too much. I, I'm not saying it. It's the word of God. Amen. Don't drink what? Too much wine. That cheapens your life. Drink the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Use drought of him. Hallelujah. Take so much of God. It's the time to take much of God. Some of you have already, all your bottles have been arranged now. This one is for Christmas Eve. This one is for Christmas Day. This one is for Boxing Day. This one is for Wash Night Eve. This one, that one is even now. Uh, it is well. Drink what? The Spirit of God. Verse 19. Sing hymns instead of drinking songs. Hmm. Sing what? Hymns. Sing songs from your heart to Christ. Sing praises over everything. Any excuse for a song to God the Father in the name of our Lord, our Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So number one, wake up. Number two, strengthen what remains. Strengthen what? What remains. We are not to be a lazy church. We are what? We are not to be a lazy church. We can't be lazy. We cannot afford to be lazy. In the time that we are in, we cannot afford to be lazy. And what that causes is that we must focus on doing the main thing, the main assignment. Make disciples of all nations. You do your part, I do my part. Time for evangelism, you are there. Time for prayer, you are there. Time to work for God, you are there. You cannot afford to be lazy. Tell somebody, don't be lazy. Don't sleep too much. Don't eat too much. Wake up. Matthew 16, 18 says, On this rock I will build my church, and the gates of it shall not prevail against it. Hallelujah. May it be the focused attention of God. May it be one that God can rely on to build his church. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Finally, my time is running now, so let me go. Finally, the third point. We are not a non-missional church. We are not a non-missional church. What do I mean? Revelation 3, verse 3. Remember, dear, for how you have received and heard, hold fast and repent. Hold fast and repent. I think, was it this last week we were fasting for seven days? All about mercy, all about forgiveness, all about repentance. Therefore, if you will not wash, I will come upon you as a thief. And you will not know what hour I will come upon you. And that's what we are seeing in our nation. Gradually, 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 the figures are changing. But thank God you and I, we are not among the dead. Amen? In your time, in your time, in our time, no. We will rewrite the figures. We will rewrite the figures. And wherever you see yourselves, you have to do your part. Amen? Wherever you are in the schools, you are in your workplace, you have to intentionally do your part. Intentionally do your part. You have to claim the souls in that setting. You must intentionally do your part. We are a missional church. Now, we'll end with what, what that means. That means we must be sacrificial. We must be giving. Paul was writing about sacrifice. About sacrifice. Acts 21. Acts 21. And then I'll round up. Acts 21. Verse 10 to 14. And as we stayed many days talking about sacrifice, a certain prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. When he had come to us, he took Paul's belt, bound his own hands and feet, and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, so shall the Jews of Jerusalem bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Now, when we heard these things, both we and those from that place pleaded with him not to go up to Jerusalem. But look at what Paul said, sacrificial. Paul answered, What do you mean by weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die at Jerusalem. Like John, no, give me Scotland or I die. Have you prayed that kind of prayer? That Lord, give me Bradford or I die. You've not prayed that prayer. Some of you need to pray like, give me the United Kingdom or I die. I've prayed about Bradford. I remember we came back from the U.S. and we were leading so many kind of prayer meetings and all kind of stuff. I've shared it here before. And this particular night, I was sleeping and I was talking. <laughs> sleeping and talking. <laughs> praying in the Holy Ghost. I was praying in the Holy Ghost. My wife and myself in the bed and said, this African man, what is he doing again? <laughs> His uh, wishes from his village are disturbing him. And I was just praying, man, Libra, Kato, Reketel, what? and I'm deep asleep, snoring about praying in the Holy Ghost. And she allowed me to be praying, praying, praying in the Holy Ghost, and I'm sleep, asleep. You will win in your dreams. Some of you, every time, you say, hey, dog, dog, dog. When you should be chasing away every nonsense, you are the one being chased. So by the time I calmed down from that encounter, I calmed down and she tapped me and said, Honey, you've been disturbing the old. <laughs> you've been praying. And I said, What's happening? I said, You won't understand. God was showing me Bradford. I was seeing Bradford like a screen in that encounter, a screen like this. And in the screen was all the, all the buildings of the other religion in Bradford. 
And I said, God, why did you send me back from the U.S. and to a city whereby there is this kind of nonsense that is in my city? It cannot be. That was the part. That was why I was praying in the Holy Ghost. It cannot be, God. It cannot be. And I was praying in that encounter. It cannot be. And as I began continue praying, 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 this, the buildings leveled. And I woke up. And that's why I have so much confidence in this city. We will take over. You and I will take over. Whatever be it, I'm so confident I do what I do in Bradford because of the encounters I've had. Not man telling me, not theology. It's what God has showed me. That whatever be the buildings, they become a plane. But you must wake up. Hallelujah. If you have to trek to church, you have to trek to church. You do it. Amen. What did I say? If you have to trek to prayer meet, if you have to walk around midnight, I mean, I, I, I was, it's now that we try to sleep. But what I learned, what we learned, what we used to do, I can wake up any time of the night. Once I wake up, I am walking. From BD5, I'm in BD17. From BD1, I'm down there. All over the city. I was doing that nearly every time. There's no prayer time. I have no prayer schedule. I walk anytime, anytime, any time of the day, any time of the night, any time. I was telling my minister yesterday, in two years, less than two years, we moved to this building. In less than two years. I started pastoring in 2009, 1st of January. By September, we were in this building. This is not one funny place whereby you fast for one days and everybody gather. Hmm? But in less than two years, we are in this building. Another two years, we bought this building. And with uh, 90% students. You think it's by sleeping. And you, and you are still sleeping. You do your part. Amen? Other body building that you are here. Amen? You too, you will buy something. Amen? You too what? You know, others bought the building and you are here sitting down and you are sitting about cold, cold matter. Amen? You will make the place warm. Hallelujah. Because, yeah, 90% we are here. No, there's no, no trick here. 90% students. But we, in two years, we, have, we, we are here in this building. We were not packing things in hotels again. Less than two years. In the next two years, 2012, November, we bought the building. So what will you do? By sleeping, no, you wake up. Tell somebody, I, I wake up. From today, I am awake. I'm awake. Final scripture. You mean that Timothy? Final scripture. So Paul said, Acts 20, verse 24, verse 22 to 24. I'll use that then. We'll the message translation. Interesting. Acts 20. So Paul now is the prophesy that he will be in chains. He will be flocked. If he dare preach the word of God. If he dare go over to the other city. Look at what Paul said. The message translation. But there is another urgency before me now. I feel compelled to go to Jerusalem. For some of us, no small restriction. Don't preach. And that is, I cannot preach here. Or in my workplace, I can't. But can't you pray? You go to the car park, you pray. Claim all the cars for Jesus. They'll be driving. They don't know how, but they will drive to the church. <laughs> Invite your boss to a musical concert. It's Christmas carol. There's, it's no offense. It's no what? Offense. It's a carol. Everybody celebrates Christmas. Eh? So, oh, we're having a musical Christmas. Invite the boss. They will come. Do your part. Leave the rest for... God. But there is an urgency before me now. I feel compelled to go to Jerusalem. I'm completely in the dark about what will happen when I get there. Next. I do not know, I do know that it won't be any picnic. Some of us, we are still having picnic. Even in uh, winter. For the Holy Spirit has let me know repeatedly and clearly that there are hard times and imprisonment I heard. 
but that matters little. What matters most to me is to finish what God started. The tragedy of not finishing well. What matters to me as a person is to finish what God has started. The glory, Ega 2 verse 9 says, the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. You may have seen, but there's a greater glory ahead of us. What matters most to me is to finish what God started, the job the master Jesus gave me of letting everyone I meet know all about this incredible, extravagant generosity of God. Hallelujah. Let's rise up. Our time is up. That should be what matters to you in this Christmas season. Thank God for all the bottles that you've arranged. It is well. You will drink the Holy Ghost. Tell somebody, drink the Holy Ghost. Forget about the bottles. Hallelujah. Be drunk in the Holy Ghost. Tap somebody, shake her. Be drunk in the Holy Ghost. Hey, be drunk in the Holy Ghost. Hey, I will be drunk in the Holy Ghost. Leah Kataya Bakoto.